map with this team and team fighting well. Yeah, I think it's the best way to sort of mature as a player is you can get those decreasing returns yeah. on individual skill, but the more you know about how to play with the team, how to make calls, how to choose engages, that's the big deal. I remember he used to talk about playing with Chouster so much, how Chouster would train him up how to play, but now he's the longest standing member on the roster. He's the guy with all the all the history. He's the guy with all the knowledge. And he's drawing vain bands still. So he's yep. understanding his strengths, but working to supplant his weaknesses with more strength. With more strength. Let's yes, absolutely. It's just such a great choice. Right now, Shifter pulls up the Ziggs ban. I think CLG still has some memories of those team yeah. fights. Shifter nearly single-handedly won that game. Daydream again is Andy banned away as well. I actually feel like that Ziggs pan serves multiple purposes. When CLG is rotating properly, they do a lot of early game grouping and turret sieging, and it's incredibly difficult to push down against a Zig. So they're really getting rid of Shifter's best wave clear champion, as well as one of his best champions overall. True. We'll see how much CLG can do then in the mid game by the time you've got like an Athene's Ziggs, what, what that would have done compared to what Shifter ends up getting here in the lineup. CLG taking their time with their bands though. They want to make sure that even if they did predict Coast's ban so far, but they're still happy with what they chose to do before. Mm. Lee Sin removed away, so Zion using another champion. I want to say, though, Jax yeah. still open. That's a big one that exactly. I got to think about. Nidalee and Jax were actually banned in pretty much every game, actually in the OGN quarterfinal match that happened last night. And Team Coast really thrives off both of those champions. Shifters Nidalee is awesome, and Zion Spartan was really the first one to start taking Jax here in North America talked to Nyen earlier in the back room. He said he was going to play Heimerdinger top lane. Then he smiled, and I said he's going to play Shivana. And he's like, yeah, I'll play Shivana. Because <laughs> he's played it 16 times, but oh, it's Jax! Oh, they steal away the Jax. Now, the question for me is, uh, we typically see Renekton as a good lane counter to Jax. It's and true. Coast like, yeah, if we get ahead early in lanes, we'll be okay. And that champion's not banned. This is awesome, actually. So Zion Spartan, even though he can play Renekton and it shuts down Jax fairly well, it's not his style. If he has yeah. to usually pick between the Renekton and Shivana things in top lane, he almost always goes with Shivana. It's very rare that he ends up playing Renekton, but against Jax, I wonder what his options really are. That's a bold strategy by CLG, leaving that much stuff up, knowing that Coast was going to want to take Jax anyway, and then just swiping it away from him. Nian trying to diversify his champion pool. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. That's not the Nian sort of type of champion. He tends to play more of the tanky top laner type guys, so... Coach going to make do with other lanes here. Thresh picked up for Daydream and LeBlanc there for Shifter. So maybe not quite as much wave clear, but certainly playmaking for the mid laner. Yeah, last game of the regular season, Shifter started 10-0-2 against Cloud9 on LeBlanc. Mm -hmm. He is a formidable threat with that champion. And it actually plays even better with the Thresh for added mobility with that Dark Passage, the Lantern, as they say. That's some powerful picks coming up from Coach. There's also an outside chance on the COG side that it could be a jungle Jax? True. Most likely not, but just considering Nien's champion pool has been fairly limited and Jax is a new addition, there's always that chance that you could throw in the jungle Jax. It's gaining a lot of popularity around the world. It's interesting, actually. I remember um, it was uh, Devil of talking in the video we just saw. He's like, yeah, you know, if Coast learned some more of those like meta champions where like Zion was like the only guy playing Jax mm. and now like everyone's playing it, so it is yeah. a meta champion. Yeah. It's like, well, maybe they're just determining everything and you guys should follow quicker, who knows? Lulu, though, Lucian also picked up there for CLG, so picking up a lot of comfortable chance for them. Lulu, of course, had some decently sized nerfs in the 4.5 patch. 80 base damage was dropped out for health picks. You can also not put a picks on someone and get two Glitter Lances off, yet she has still remained a decent priority pick, I'd like to say. Mm -hmm. Has not been getting first pick nearly as much, but can still provide a lot of pressure and still synergizes with CLG's roaming play style with their want of getting move speed on a lot of champions, being able to shove lanes quickly, and most likely just to win lane for Link against Shifter. That's going to be the goal for this one. And of course, if you can roam around and make plays, then that's going to be all that Link wants to go for here. Coast going to make some new picks up, though. Ezreal grabbed, interesting. Not one I see off for Wiz Fusion, but also the jungle Sinjao. out. It is 4.5. Yeah, the Ezreal is to generally have a better counter to Jax's Leaf Strike, being able to very quickly get out of the way. And the Jin Sao is just the new patch. Yep. He has been excessively helped by the Pharaoh Flare because he was always good early game with Riggles, but now he has a much better transition into the mid and late game if he can eventually transform that Riggles into a Pharaoh Flare. We'll have to see if Nintendo can use that. It does fit his style because it's a heavy ganker, and when he is at his best, he is getting Zion and Shifter farmed up. However, it is somewhat unsafe 
early game ward-wise, which is actually something that Coast has to do a lot of against CLG's map rotations. That's true, yeah, is how well can you show up to these fights in time. They're not great defensive champions. It's like if, if you know, CLG mm. sets up and starts to siege, mm. bad thing is CLG Nocturne. It's a support Soraka. Lulu, because mm. Aphromoo has always played support Lulu, and they're going with the mid lane Soraka. That is some clever stuff there for CLG. Yeah, I think that makes a lot more sense. Thankfully, at least for the Coast lineup, it wasn't like they baited the pick. The LeBlanc was picked blind anyway, but Kind of logic gaming, making sure they know about this bottom lane setup and say, yep, we're happy with all of this. So now the pick is the Coast top laner, unless it's like top Sin Zhao, which I doubt. Say, okay, what are you going to fight Jack with? You waited the entire champs like to make your choice. Yeah. What's it going to be? And the interesting thing about this that I like so much is these guys have had two weeks to prepare for this playoff matchup. Mm -hmm. And they've had two weeks to play on this patch, which changed a lot. We're going to see way more heals, obviously. Right now, CLG is slated to have three of them on their yep. lineup, actually, plus the Soraka. A totally different team comp coming out from them. We get to see Zion on Rise. He played that once, I believe, and did not do well on it during Super Week. But really, this COG lineup is something completely different. Yeah, it's it's actually a little bit akin, I mean, not entirely, right, because you're not seeing like a top lane AP champ, but it's like yeah. a little bit akin to what Fnatic was running in their successful run, where you've got a lot, a lot of defensive, of and shields. right? A very kitey AD carry, an opportunistic jungler there. And then um, in this case, it's a very split pushing top laner. So it's actually a little more of a Korean style where Jax is on his own. It's the comps that SKT was running. They have much more dive potential, COG as a team with that team composition. It's all about them being strong in the laning phase and whether or not Dexter can get ahead on Nocturne and just finish off fights during split push. Yeah, so see if they can do it though. As the teams load into Drift, let's check out who you're predicting to win. With 86% of the vote, you're tipping this in Counter Logic Gaming's favor. Yeah, they have dominated Coast statistically throughout the year. It is a huge favorite here for COG. People expect them to go deep within the playoffs. So 86%. Let's see if they can do it now today. We're also adding a new feature. During the game, we'll be checking with you on Twitter to see who you think will win each game. Tweet your game predictions using the hashtag COGWIN or the hashtag CSTWIN for Coast to at LOL Esports. And we will be checking in throughout the day to see how you're voting. Right now, it's 86 to 14. Both those numbers can that shift was the pre vote. The game. Yes. Now comes the Twitter vote. Yep. We'll see where that moves yeah. on over time. And, you know, if Shifter starts 10 and 0, you might see that shift way over Start to the red moving. side. Yeah. Move over left. This is I know, right for everyone else. It's going to be tough for him to assassinate the heel Soraka. That's true. Line. Well, yeah, so outside of summoner heel, though, for the worst worth, outside of summoner heel, Soraka, or I should say LeBlanc, has a total of three seconds of silence. True. So if you can make it, if you make it happen, you only have to get through the summoner heal, and you've got a knight to help kind of mitigate that. There's, there's a chance, as difficult as it is, there's a chance you can just like, you know, burst that guy out. But Link, I want to point out, heavy defense tree already has Runic Ooh. Blessing. Guy is making sure that he is durable at the start of this game. The 50 health shield upon spawn. Yeah, that is standard for uh, mid Raka is 21 defense. Because so early on in the game, what a lot of Sorakas like to do, high in particular, actually, we'll get back to that later because these guys are potentially collision coursing with each other. Thresh would have a chance of hooking Nian if he walks in just right. But they don't have the angle. Nian would be able to see them if they come out of that brush early. Yeah. And Link is actually playing defensive, so... And I like where he's standing so he as well. Run away. He's not in hook range without being able to see the thrash. Like, there's no over-the-wall hooks that are possible. And Nian's the only guy in this brush because he'll learn Counter-Strike and not die and set up a counter-attack. So CLG are playing this counter-invade properly. The rest of CLG would be ready mm. to collapse. Coast also sent an early ward down in the river brush by Dragon to yeah. watch for blue buff invades, but they're just defending the blue buff, basically. Actually, a proper ping on where CLG thinks there might be a ward. It's interesting how Coast would have the edge of catching because of the Thresh death sentence, but if it was a 5v5 fight, Link Soraka would win if they were grouped up. Mystic Shot falls wide, but this would be a 5v4. Wiz Fusion goes in to first, bump. takes a bunch of damage, flashes out, Nintendo flashing away as well, and Yen do does not land the stun. But Coast forced to run away. I don't know why Ez went in first. Now Shifter forced to run. Will he learn? Yep. Dash is away, Nintendo should be fairly safe, but CLG now owns this jungle. Very interesting. CLG manages to push Coast back 4v5 just because they got the jump on them. And because Zion Spartans already went back to base, this is a successful blue invade that will delay Nintendo Dex's early jungle. Oh, we're going to see what Coast can do off the back of this one because right now it looks like the lane's going to be two on two. Teleports go to the top lane. 
quick uh, recall from Nian will keep him safe, but Nintendo might just be stuck with only one buff here, and even Link. Yeah. He's gonna he's, get the timer. Okay. He's making sure to get eyes on Nintendo Dex so they can make sure to secure Dexter's blue buff. In fact, Nintendo is so low off of that one, and because he was warded, he is even more scared right now, which will do great things for COD's ability to get past the early game Xin Zhao power. And yep, so kind of logic gaming already starting out nicely. Dexter gonna grab the second blue buff there. So Nintendo won't get one whatsoever on this first rotation. He's gonna grab the red and some lesser buffs. Wiz Fusion already pushed around as well. You can see Spell Thief's Edge Aphromoo poking the best he can, doing a good job of that. One really interesting byproduct of the Lulu nerfs that ended up happening is it didn't hit support Lulu nearly as much as it did mid Lulu, only because one of the main harassment tools for mid Lulu was putting the Hell Picks on someone and then Glitter Lancing twice. That is no longer possible because of the duration of Hell Picks being on someone. But the support Lulu almost never did that because you did not have the mana regeneration to pull that off. So mm -hmm. Aphromoo can still play support Lulu most like he used to and have the same success. I do want to see, though, with, with those changes, what ability order he goes for because I've seen actually a lot of guys, especially a couple of the EU Challenger guys who are playing support Lulu, would actually max Hell Picks second, whether for the shield or just the easy burst to land. But rank one of that is actually an unaffected ability anyway. Look at that, Dexter level four at three minutes and 40 seconds because he's gotten three large buffs. Whereas Nintendo is off having to do battle with the white, still level two, gonna hit level three off that thing. Yeah, so, so a full level behind. Exactly, a full level behind the Coast Jungler right here. Down in CS, down in XP. We'll see what else he can do with this one. Sin Zhao, a great ganker if he can get his way in, especially with Lanterns. Like, I wanna see how safe Devilist and Aphromoo have to play to make sure they don't succumb to ganks like this. Well, the nice thing about the Lucian pick against the Shin Zhao is when he dashes away, he can cleanse the slow. Mm -hmm. And it becomes immensely difficult for Nintendo to have any type of sticking power against Double Well, oh, that hook's gonna hit a minion. Doesn't mean too much for that one, but does that count as a hit? It did hit something <laughs> and, you know, pull it's it. something. The cooldown went down when you did it. So we take a look at the lanes real quick, because obviously the jungler, uh, Dexter, is doing much better than Nintendo. Actually, the AD carries as well, Double if far ahead of Wiz Fusion. But Zion Spartan's doing well in lane, and so is Shifter. So the goal actually fairly close together. Yeah. Right now, it's going to be Dexter trying to hit level 6 and take an edge. Nian running himself out of mana, so it's it's a bit of a farm lane here. He was late to lane, which gives Zion Spartan a bit of an edge. And Ryze really beats on melee champions. Levels 1 through 5 most of the time, so he's at a strong point at this moment. Nian's got to be a little bit careful. Not much mana as Nian hit. Forced to flash away. The Q's almost quite going to land in 10, dude. His oh, flash was down yep. in level one and exactly. can't get the first blood. If Nintendo had his flash without that level one, that would have been a kill on Nien. So big early game plays from CLG, saving Nien in that top lane from that gank. And Aphromoo is able to like 1v2 in this lane, basically. It's basically Daydreamer misses a hook, and then Aphromoo says, okay, go, I can fight you. You can't turn it around, and goes in and zones the carry back. 15 minion kill lead here. There's some still left under the turret, but this is a gigantic lead. And still the poke coming through Aphromoo, completely safe back here. This is incredibly beneficial for CLG for a number of reasons. There was a lot of talk amongst the pro teams about whether or not Feral Flare and the Feral Flare junglers are viable in pro play because it's so difficult for junglers to actually get the large camps in a speedy enough manner for it to make an impact. Often because you see so many lane swaps lately and 2v1s and 3v1s where junglers are trapped in lanes and not able to farm big camps. But in this game, CLG successfully forced a 2v2. Dexter has been farming up a storm, and his lanes are doing well enough that he hasn't even had to think about ganking. He has just been farming non-stop. This is the perfect situation for Nocturne to be in, where he can farm up, get Feral Flare stacks, and then just show up somewhere at level 6 with his ultimate. He's going to be level 6 most likely after double golems, and be able to make plays. This is perfect for Dexter and CLG. Well, we'll see which lane he chooses to salvage right now. Actually, top lane is holding completely equal. Nian burned his TP to get back into lane. Zion Spartan with Tier, though, doing some major damage. Nian actually yeah. forced out rather quickly, chugging potions to keep himself alive, but Zion with heavy ward control. There's, I guess you can kind of only knock your old lane gank to turn this lane around. Yeah, I wonder if they're just going to leave Nian B and hope that Zion Spartan doesn't become too much of a problem because that lane is unfarmable for Nian right now. If he gets too far forward, he would get flashed down for Zion. Dexter didn't quite hit level 6. He's trying to get it in lane, actually. He's going to end up going back and recalling. Keep in mind also, the teleport is up for Zion, so if Dexter does force something, if it's not a completely one-sided fight, Zion can also mm. turn that one around. You actually might not see Dexter wanting to show up unless they think like Link's wish will be enough or something. 
I do want to know what, what actually the choice ends up being. I know Nocturne's a faster clearer than Sin Zhao, so he'll get more Feral Flare stacked if that's an important resource for CLG. I want to see what, what their actual like well advantage comes to. One actual advantage is that CLG's bottom lane is outclassing Coast right now. Yeah. Thresh Ezreal is actually a very strong laning combo, but Alpha Moon Double if they're just obliterating them right oh, now. Oh, wow. He just picked up first blood 2v2. Yeah, that was an over extension right there. Daydream and goes down. The summoner heals were still up, actually. Coast didn't even anticipate the damage that came through. CLG, gigantic lead down here. Yeah, big misplays coming out from Coast there. And Double if also delays Not quite. nothing. He gets a lot of minions, though. Yeah. Yeah. Half of them. Missed a bit of the culling, but it's all right. Doing well. Quick lane shove here. CLG. With the shove in mid, are they are they rotating dragon or where are they headed? They're right now just sharing a lot of experience and making sure they have dragon control. They actually missed that sweep, uh, which I wonder if that's going to cost Link his life. Shifter's thinking about it. He had to run out. Yep. Okay. Well, it looks like the collapse from Coast is in time. CLG, the mid shove. Got them to the dragon pit, but it looks like there's not going to be anything capitalized off that. Link is going to get a bit of a late recall. Shifter's going to re-hold the mid lane there. 61 to 65 in minion. Slight lead for Coast, but I mean, overall, though, you got to say yeah. CLG definitely winning the map. CLG's in complete control. Coast's strength, or what they have traditionally relied upon against the top tier teams, is trying to rely on their solo lanes and just win laning because they admit that they are strategically weaker than the top teams, especially CLG. CLG is playing 2v2, 1v1, and 1v1 lanes across the map and winning by a thousand gold. Yeah, absolutely impressive play, especially, I gotta say, Aphromoo showing up massive. First blood goes to him. He's got the Sight Stone. He's got his uh, Frost Fang as well. So more annoyance from Lulu will be coming out very shortly. Three points on Death Center for Daydream. It's three points in Glitter Lance for the Lulu. Zion gonna get hit up right here. Very little mana on him. Nian's gonna have a great trade, but he's got minions to deal with. Yeah, Zion's gonna be going back anyway. He's Actually, that was a f that was actually a fairly big misplay by Nien up there because with jumping on Zion Spartan, he allowed the wave to hit his turret so he can no longer freeze it. And he's going to lose out on denying a lot of CS to Zion Spartan, but that's the one lane going well. Uh, two lanes actually going well for Coast overall. Is there solos, but it's just the bottom lane of the jungler getting out of control. And we'll see if Doublelift and Afro can put this game on their back. They said they'd do it at the beginning of the year. Said, you know, now that supports get more gold, we can make more plays. No. We can single-handedly carry the team. Or I guess two-handedly carry the team. That would make more sense. Um, and right now, yeah, they're, they're the entire reason for CLG winning right here. Zion Spartan, 10 minion lead. Still actually walking to the lane. He's kept his teleport available the last two times he's recalled. So he's really waited to turn something around if a dive does happen. He hasn't been heavily pressured in that lane. It's gotten off a lot of farm, which is why Dexter's waiting in the wings. Level 8, same level as Zion. And Zion is still rather squishy. If Nyan could get a stun, they could change something. But that wave is going to push too far. This is not an extremely gankable lane. Dexter would require a lot of patience to get a kill here. He's going to slink into brush number two. Can't quite reach the third one. Look at that pesky yeah. melee minion. He would actually have to wait for Zion Spartan to push this wave out, with which he has no motivation to, unless Nyan was actually very low. If Dexter wants his kill, I feel like he's going to have to wait a really long time. Can they just force it under the turret with their CC? It's unlikely, but they're going to try. Trying. There's the ulti popped in. The stun comes by as well. Zion flashes, gets away from the fear. Can he get the AoE down to keep himself alive? Take it even more pain. Wish comes rock. through. Oh. Dexter's going to make it enough. Nien takes turret shots. Counter logic game and get the turret dive to top lane. They did a couple things actually really well with that dive. Is they had Nien taking the turret with the armor and magic resist of his Jax ultimate. And they had this rock ult come in to heal them extra. So a big force of a dive there, but they do make it work out. Props to CLG for a good tactical maneuver. And Coast don't get the kill back on that one. The recalls come through in time. CLG fully safe. Excellent play by these team. And Link's just going to hold the mid lane, right? He got the wish, got the assist credit, and then he gets, you know, to push on the mid lane and get, a, get the minions back against Shifter. That gank really just goes to show you how vulnerable Ryze is to ganks in the early game. I wonder if Dexter's going to continue to do that on his ultimate cooldown until Zion Spartan gets a little bit of armor because those ganks will be free. The fact that they could do that on top of a turret with Zion's flash up and still get a successful kill shows how vulnerable he is. Yeah, everything burned didn't even matter. The flash is used by CLG, but of course well played. So now closer to 2,000 gold counter logic gaming, wanting to win the best of three, secure the LCS spot, move on to the semifinals. It's going to be all, all the things that CLG wants to do. They are one of the, I guess you could say favorites. I, for, you know, the, the number one run, 
if you're just trying to rank teams based off their mid and late season success, they're in the conversation for top team in North America. Mm -hmm. uh, if they win this one, that match against TSM could be anyone's game. Yeah, not quite getting in range for the stun. Good ward by Zion Spark. Yeah, the Nocturne winning around. Dexter's looking to make plays, but even if he's not getting too many ganks, he's still farming very successfully. Both junglers now have their wriggles. Actually, more damage added for Dexter going towards, I'm guessing, Cutlass, actually, on the Nocturne. So a very damage-heavy jungler pick up here. Dexter really embracing the Feral Flare changes. The build on Nocturne is Feral Flare with Blade of the Ruin King. You just rip through everything. It also has incredible Baron threat once he completes those items. They could two-man it with Nyan and Dexter when they get those items. Oh, man, that's absolutely true. That's going to be a scary thing if that ever does happen. Coast would fall rather far behind if that came through. Right now, just a more passive game, and it's really the laning phase for a large portion of it. Nyan finally getting his first real minion lead in the top lane. The kills, of course, helping that one. Once again, Dexter just showing up to wave clear mid, but it frees up some time for Link to, to get the recalls without losing much to his turret. But the big story as well is just the fact that Doublelift and Aphromoo are winning so heavily in this mm. bottom lane. A bunch more gold from the GP10 that Afro picked up. The 30 minion lead as well for the AD carries. It's honestly just like CLG, like they can play the laning phase and they'll grow a lead that way. Doublelift is 800 gold above Wiz Fusion, and Aphromoo is also 750 gold above the German. You add those guys two together, that's a 1500 gold lead accrued over only 13 and a half minutes by the CLG bottom lane. That's three Without quarters. jungle or intervention. Yeah. Three quarters of the CLG gold lead is just that bottom lane right there. That is like the reason that Counter Logic Gaming is winning right now. Even the first blood and everything else, right? All that adds up here. So, Dexter taking away more of the camps. 72 minions on him. Ooh. Playing a very farm heavy style, Afro. This is actually quite dangerous by CLG. We'll see if they can pull it off. Yen has no teleport, whereas Zion Spartan does. It could be a forced 5v5 by Coast, but CLG is daring them to come. And dude's slinking around, puts the ward down. CLG does have to back off. Cutlass first Ezreal actually with Fusion going for a pretty self-sufficient build here in the back line. He does that frequently. Yeah. With Fusion will rush Blade of the Rune King more so than anyone else. It's because he really loves self-peel and just staying alive in fights because they rely so heavily on their solo laners. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you don't have a real tank line like you do with a lot of other conventional teams. You're, you bring in carry top laners, carry mid laners, they're going to go get kills on their own. And you have to play by yourself. We'll see how well with Fusion can stay alive. He... Hasn't died here, but he's been pushed under the turret so much, he's not getting many minions. Still trying to gain some levels. Level 8 and 8 versus 9 and 8, so gold and XP lead for the CLG bottom lane. No big surprise, though, because they're winning. But it's a very patient game. Dexter going to look for his next gank. His ulti is back up. I don't know. Coast very rarely are past the river, though. It's They're difficult gra kills to grab, and you've got heals and, and flashes available. It's important to note that we're only 50 minutes in, and the Feral Flare has been transformed for Dexter. Whereas Nintendo is on 18 of the 25 stacks, but this pink ward could turn into a fight. And he gets the lantern, though, gets himself out, but there might still be an engage. Dexter on the front lines. Glitter Lamps does not quite land. He's still chasing, though. Teleport, Teleport in comes in. The end. The box comes down. Dangerman gonna get stunned up, though. Does he have anywhere to go? He does not. Down goes the coast support. CLG 3 0 and kills and control over Dragon. The very deep pink ward comes in clutch for CLG. Zon Spartan does not match that teleport because Coast was on the retreat. Means a kill and a dragon, plus they still hold the mid lane. Big damage Whoa. comes through Shifter, finds the kill, and Aphromo even wish is not enough. Blue team takes down Dragon, though, that's going to be secured by Dexter. Nintendo forced to run, he'll survive, but a counter kill for Coast. Yeah, they do get one back onto their most important player as well. Shifter with the DFG burst surprises CLG with that damage. Overall, though, still big advantage gained by CLG. Yeah, three and a half thousand gold there. That number keeps going up. Watch that kill again real quick. Yeah, it was pretty much just Aphromoo getting hit by the chains and the full combo from Shifter. Uh, Link's ultimate, I think, came in after he was dead. It was just an unexpected amount of damage. And one thing they did do is they forced Link to heal himself and immediately switched targets mm -hmm. to burst down. I think the wish came through in time. I want to say it did. I know the particle kind of... Yeah, it was well, the either way, bunch combo of from LeBlanc onto a support with yeah. little to no magic resist. But this is Zion Spartan being a little vulnerable. Three-man gank, look out. This does not look good for Ryze. The 1v3 comes in. He's going to get feared up under the turret as well. Nowhere else to go. The heal helps keep Nian alive, and there's going to be pressure on the top turret. I wonder if CLG overcommitted that. They actually set four up, and that leaves them vulnerable to some counter-pushing by Coast. How well can they use their teamwork to get some of these turrets down? 
And so far, one turret for zero. We're going to see how these numbers shape up. Coast pushing the mid lane rather fast, making it a one for one. Also, Wiz Fusion is pushing on the bottom side, but even still, it's going to be a second tier turret in the top lane that CLG are almost definitely going to get, which still is a positive trade for CLG. But also does mean the shifter will be slightly unlocked to roam. Not the most ideal trade, but CLG will take it if they can get something back in the mid lane. The mid lane is fairly low. Shifter's far too threatening. Yeah. One shot's caster minions. Sends the message that Hala could be your champion. Be careful about that one. Level 12 right now on LeBlanc has Sork Shoes as well. The build we typically see from DFG first LeBlanc is Void Staff next. Yeah. We'll see if that is his choice. It's generally for more magic penetration because DFG is just accentuating all the base damages early on. And I want to see how the builds progress. So Nian grabbed early Merc Treads right. to survive both Rise and even LeBlanc. There's a lot of Merc Treads on there too. Yeah. Dexter's still squishy though. Like Dexter has no MR or no bonus health in his kit. But uh oh. Zion Spartan going to face check into a Jax. Slowed down. Spells come through. He should be taking some more damage actually. No Nian turret really there. Wants this. You're right. There is no turret. Nian might get the 1v1 kill. Zion gets a lantern just in time. Daydream and saves him. Still a good hide-and-go-seek by Nian. I wonder if it's going to cost him. He popped his ultimate throughout that. Going to wish he had it right about now. TFG comes out. The wish comes through. There's the ignite. Maybe later than you would have wished, though. Nocturne ult comes through for the mid lane. Now Nintendo locked up. Pops the ulti link. Getting the damage through. Hex comes in. They get the lantern. The heals come through. Keeps him alive. Top lane kill doesn't fall through either. Nian also, yep, as you say, managed to escape. But COG with the ultimates and the commitment by Coast. Get another turret. Looks like it's going to be even more damage. They even force back Zion Spartan doing his best to defend. That tier two will survive, but we're at now five and a half thousand gold, 19 minutes in. The number is continually growing. CLG wow. keep finding those rotational advantages, the pushes, the better fights, and the growing leads. Smites that away as well. Dexter getting more and more farmed. 100 CS on Nocturne. 201. Yep, Feral Flare as well is at eight stacks already. So his life on hit uh, is what we actually need to keep track of. Nocturne turns into a bit of a life stealing monster if he gets a very stacked Feral Flare. Even though it does do some nice magic damage, it's really the, the life steal and the life on hit that makes these builds so potent. So right now he's at 18. It's 10 plus number of stacks. That'll keep growing, of course, one per stack. So far, still no Feral Flare for Nintendo. Almost 20 minutes in. Senjiao is a bit of a slow yeah. stacker, but... It's not about the Flare for Zin. Like, it, sure. it is nice for him to have it later in the game, but it's about the early game ganking and the early game pressure, and that's actually not where Nintendo's been able to come through. Yeah, only one kill for his team. He hasn't part of his only team's kill, to be fair, but that was the one mid lane dive. 100% kill participation. True, yeah. I mean, Shifter and, and Nintendo are doing their job. They got that one kill on the after move, but... Unfortunately, no other plays have yet been made. The flash that was burned at level one, I think, is just kind of heartbreaking because that was a successful gank attempt. They got Nian's flash, but then he couldn't follow up. Something that's a little bit interesting here about Link's build is he's really disrespecting the physical damage on Coast by building that Negatron Cloak with Mercury Treads and an Athenian Sun Holy Grail. He's just completely against the double AP, and he knows since Wiz Fusion built Blade of the Ruin King first, he's not going to be a damaging threat. And Sorak is completely fine just stacking magic resistance and making sure he can't get assassinated by Shifter's LeBlanc. That's a good choice there. He's going to rely on Nian for the damage. And Dexter, I mean, you've got a Feral Flare, Blade of the Rune King, Berserkers, Greaves, Jungler now. Like, you don't need more damage threats at that point. Just go be durable. Go give your team some help with this one. I would expect Aegis at some point to come through because you're, you're facing Fed double AP. Like, this feels like the right choice at this point. Coast still on the wave for you. are seeing LeBlanc getting most of those minions under the turret. 197 minions to 163 of Wiz Fusion. It's definitely where the damage is coming in right now. CLG's just very controlled right now in the way they're pulling this off. Shifter has not been able to roam around. CLG has done a very good job of taking out Coast Pink Wards when they're there. You can see Coast is desperately trying to get vision control back. That's why they have three sweepers despite being pushed back. Because without Rome, they cannot succeed. But here's the dive, 5v3. Gonna do what they can. You've got a little while till the next two people come in. Daydreaming goes down. Dexter claims that kill, gets healed up in the process. Turret will fall as well. Coast cannot stop that onslaught of damage. 
Nice dash away by Doublelift as well to prevent the assassination. Coast might try and find something like extra off the back of this, but they're already down to support. And the dragon is up. COG is going to try and force this one. They kill it so fast. Yeah, it's going to be theirs without any contest, it looks like. It's going to be even more gold going this way. 7,000-ish gold. 7.7,000 7, gold. I mean, CLG completely in control. Two of two dragons. They're not giving away anything. Yeah, and this was just because they saw the rise was not near, and they knew how well they could dive. Jax and Nocturne lead the way, and everyone else just kind of piles on. Because they have so many shields and heals, they are not afraid of that turret. And expect more of that from CLG. Mien and Dexter will be able to get those turret dives down soon. And there's the Aegis actually onto Link. Yeah, so that was his choice of Negatron Ruby Crystal. He's going, it wasn't even Spectre's yeah. Cowl. He's going much more supportive on that mid lane Soraka. Very interesting choice. Normally you see the mid lane Sorakas go with the Rylize mm -hmm. uh, right after their Athene's Unholy Grail, but just because they're against double AP and because they're such a teamwork-oriented team, it doesn't really matter who builds the ore items because the gold is equally shared amongst four of them at this point with so much of the gold going to Dexter. Massive jungle threat. I, I love, love. Yeah, it's wanted completely mid laners style. to do this for a very long time, or even top laners to just build team fight oriented items when the game becomes about team fighting and not about laning. I think the case right here, CLG making that adaptation very successfully. First team I've seen really do that on the world stage here. Yeah, the professional stage. Coast forced to back away. The CLG onslaught. The five members together. There's no way Coast can stand up to that. Their damage hasn't really come through. Void staff might help shift her a bit. He can maybe pierce through some of that MR. But he's the only guy I feel like can make a gigantic impact right now in fights. You've got so long to go to Wiz Fusion gets any items. And with all the heals that are on three members of CLG, just the summoner spells, and the magic resist aura from the Aegis that's on Link, Shifter can't kill anyone. And unless Coast could somehow do a high amount of sustained damage, like Ryze getting through several rotations of spells, CLG is untouchable in these team fights. They have built just right to maximize their gold advantage. And they're going to be looking to force some pretty big things very soon. Well, right now, that looks like the force is going to be around Baron so far. Actually, Nian fairly low on health. He and Dexter are two manning it. This Maybe is a little bit risky. They are very low. And he jumps in with little health and no backup. Wow, double the one shot shifter without that. It's going to be enough. CLG pick up two kills right here. Afro still making the plays, but goes down to Baron. He can't get help from his team just yet. Nian finally shows up. Dexter around the wall as well. Half HP. Wiz Fusion can't possibly do a link here. It should be Baron. They're trying to teleport him with Ryze. This could still be a contest by Coast. I wonder how much damage Ryze is going to do when he hops in. Link has jumped on as well. Baron is aborted. Two-man stun. Gigantic engage as well. Nintendo very, very low. Hexdrinker pops, but Link will almost pick up the kill. Yeah, the Q from Double if does it. Zion Spartan now the only member alive. Daydreaman actually respawns, making it a 2v4, sort of. Double if still on the chase. So just to buying Baron. kills. Yeah, that kill in the mid lane on Shifter was surprising. Double with the magic resist does find the solo, and they're just back onto Baron. The life on hit and life steal of CLG's Nocturne right there gets in the Baron. Even more control. Great aggressive play making by CLG. Link is smiling there in the bottom corner. He knows they're doing great. Yeah. This was a little bit crazy when the Rise came in around the back, and it looked like it could be dangerous from CLG. But because Dexter was mainly the one tanking the Baron, uh, he is able to stay healthy once Rise comes in. And he still has his flash to go over the wall. At that point, Coast just has to abort. Wiz Fusion is very weak. Nice. He has his flash up and just pops him down. So CLG just stronger in every way. Absolutely. That's, that's about it. Yeah. Lock of the Iron Solari completed. Even more shields come in for CLG now. Dexter builds a Negatron Cloak as well, so he's tanky as well as having a lot of life on hit. Yeah. And they run such a completely different style of team. Like, yeah. just, you know, they, they put the lineup together. It's a carry jungle Nocturne who's just now started its first defensive items of a Warden's Mail and Negatron Cloak after he finished two fully offensive items and Berserker's Greaves. Nian's actually going for a carry focused top laner. Had a tough landing phase against Rive. Yeah. I think it's just a rough matchup in general. It's my sort of bland guess, having just yeah, like Nian observed the matchup. Nian has also always excelled in team fights. Yeah. He's very good at moving with the rest of the CLG team. And it's working. 1 0 5. Right, bad start to the lane, still succeeded very successfully. Nian in the chase against Wish Fusion. Not gonna chase that one down, gets a lantern just in case. Mid lane inhibitor turret though goes down. Nine to one in kills, 12,000 gold lead. CLG still pushing forward. Yeah, and there's almost no way of Coast to get them out of this one. I wonder how many inhibitors CLG's gonna take during the duration of this Baron buff. They still have a fair amount of time left on it. CLG is looking so good for you. 
They absolutely are. They're playing this, I think, pretty much perfectly. I love their builds. I love the fact that they changed their kind of composition around to how the game is. They want to play it. There goes the middle inhibitor 27 minutes in. Now they'll rotate down to the bottom lane, get that wave pushed up as well, and maybe take another. Coach is afraid to engage. They don't have the hard initiation. Yeah. If they do walk into the team fight, Soraka's star call will shred them out. Plus, it's an easy kill uh, for whoever Nian and Dexter jump on as long as they go as dive buddies. Yeah, last time they were in a fight like this, there comes the dive action. Dexter going in. There's a jump away from Wiz Fusion. Will keep himself alive, but down goes Nintendo X. CLG now inside the base once more. Bottom inhibitor turret goes down. This could very well be the game. Nian just taking a bit of damage, doesn't even care. Yeah, they really only killed one because the rest of Coast had to back away. Uh, they're probably going to just rotate and take inhibitor number three. There's no reason for them not to right now. The only question remains is if they decide to wait for the minions. Uh, looks like CLG is going to be impatient with this one. Baron buff still for 40, sorry, about a minute 20, actually. To back off a little bit, Dexter takes one probably more parting shot. The minions. <laughs> yeah, they think <laughs> back in the down. wave. I'll grab that before too long. Neon's full health anyway. They have Baron buff and they've got a Soraka. Not a problem. Afro trying to take some farm. Get it! Right, yeah! 18 CS. He's winning his matchup. Yeah. Gold wise across the board. They're all sitting on a fair chunk. Everyone on COG over 1,000. So unspent gold is high. But with the Baron buff, the level advantages, and two super minion waves soon to push into the base. Sitting pretty. This is an insurmountable yeah. at this point. Pretty much, yeah. It's going to be the game closing out. 29 minutes in now. Top inhibitor. Soon to be the target. Super minion is going to be flooding into the base very shortly. Mid and bot both dead. They're about half a wave away from making it in. Shifter might have to defend bottom lane, but here comes the next wave up at the top. He leads the charge, puts the stun up, goes for the engage, finds three with it. The knockout from Lulu as well. Big engage. Daydreaming is going to go down once again. Nintendo in the front line is also going to fall. They do find Dexter for this one, but still, a two for one is enough for CLG to keep pushing in. Double lift forces the back line away by himself, and the third and final inhibitor will go down. Well, they did land a nice combo on a Dexter. But they're not strong enough to push off these minions free. 12 kills to 2, 30 minutes in, the dive continues. Another engage, Zion Spartan forced to run away one more time. Inhibit sorry, Nexus turret number one will fall. Nian actually forced back, taking a lot of punishment. Little Ants as well, CLG trying to keep their health bars up. Gonna be the engage here, Shifter can't quite find enough. Nian survives one more time. And now the Nexus under fire. Coast, the respawns are so frequent this early in the game. Another engage, Nian doesn't land the stun, actually goes down, but that's gonna be the Nexus 30 minute win. CLG taking game one. CLG is going to try and make quick work of this series here. Such a nice performance there. Yeah. 12 kills to three. They bring out something new. Link goes 0 0 10 on mid lane. The locket of the iron, Solari Soraka. Uh, they were able to withstand Shifters, the block pick, because that was really the big threat from there. And now, Freak, you have to look towards game two.